Welcome back to the Institute of East Asia Training, our class on Biblical Counseling. This is our period of cooperative learning, and I was talking just uh, yesterday to one of the students there in Malaysia. She mentioned that the students there aren't all on the same level. They're not all caught up on the lectures, so they're having a hard time with these cooperative learning periods. Listen, I... Uh, I hope Joshua sees this, but Joshua, the cooperative learning is a big part of this program. So maybe you can do something to get a fire under the ones that are behind and uh, make it happen so that uh, they can take these together. Maybe I'll send you a note about that. Anyway, I'm going to have a prayer with you, then give you a quiz, and then we'll get to our cooperative learning uh, parts. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I'm asking you to bless our efforts to prepare to help real people with real problems. I ask for that gift in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, so question one. You have a pen and paper. You're ready for this. What are two substances that you can get without a prescription? In America, we say over-the-counter. Uh, in Malaysia, I don't know if you'd use that term over-the-counter, but where you don't need a doctor to help you, what are two substances you can easily get at a pharmacy that it looks like might alleviate some of the symptoms of bipolar disorder? We talked about two of them that you can get probably through a pharmacy. I'm not talking about tryptophan, that you get that in your food and that you don't need a pharmacy for that. Uh, question two. Uh, we talked quite a bit about lithium yesterday. And we talked about how in our bodies there are two habits we have that really affect those lithium levels in our in our system. What are those two habits that really affect our lithium levels? Two habits or two uh, nutritional uh, patterns. What are those things that you need to do consistently to regulate your lithium levels? Question three, what is horticulture therapy? We didn't spend a lot of time on that yesterday, but I wish I'd spent more. If you see the note by Ben, uh, Ben from Australia, uh, he commented about how being in the garden just really lifted him from a very serious depression. Uh, what is, well, I might have just given away an answer to one of my own quiz questions. Anyway, if you didn't catch it, well, go back and play it and you'll get a free one. What is horticulture therapy? That's what I'm asking. Question four. In your own words, what is cognitive behavioral therapy? CBT. What is it? What does it mean? I mean, is it like giving people hydrotherapy? Is it having them climb Mount Everest? Well, what is it? What does it involve? Cognitive behavioral therapy. And question five. Did you do your reading? Did you read that chapter in the book Mind Cure on bipolar and polar disorders and insanity? All right, so let's move to our cooperative learning. There are two questions I want you to discuss. The first one is, if you are talking to a friend or someone in your church who has recently been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, or is exhibiting those signs of cyclic, like cycling uh, mania and depression with a week or two for most of the cycles. If you find someone like that, and you are going to be trying to help them, my question is, what can you do to decrease the chance of them committing suicide? What can be done to decrease the chance of someone with bipolar disorder committing suicide? All right, so now let's go to the second question. You might spend some time on that. You'll probably spend more on this one. When you did your reading, you came across quite a number of Ellen White statements, statements that referred to uh, temporary insanity, to frenzy, to persons that were in and then out of in an insane asylum. Today, we don't really use those terms so much, frenzy and temporary insanity. Uh, and uh, I suggested to you that those might be what we would have called periods of mania. What I'm asking you to talk about is what did you see of interest in the Ellen White statements? What did you see there 
talk about it, we might have noticed different things. What did you see in those statements that could help you in counseling someone who is having some of these issues, like are described in those statements? Maybe issues like what we call bipolar disorder today. All right, you have about 40 uh, minutes to talk about these things. Uh, prepare something to turn into me. And if you find yourself with nothing more to say and a lot more time, then go ahead and just prepare a protocol for things that you could suggest to someone who you think might have bipolar disorder that might help them. A list of suggestions of what they can do and how they can go and how they can be so that they could be prospering. And yet, remember, this is cooperative learning. It's not a quiz or a test, so you can use your notes. You can uh, look and see. You can review the video. But we're trying to get you to talk things through to get things into your long-term memory. All right, God bless you. Let me pray for you again, and I'll let you go. Our Father in heaven, please bless these students who are studying about helping people with severe depression, those with mania. I ask that you will guide us carefully here. Save us from, from being responsible or partly responsible for someone's terrible decisions. And I ask for these gifts in the name of Jesus. Amen.